What happened to Petronilla, the daughter of Apostle Peter? Did Apostle Peter have a daughter? We don't know for sure because the canonical gospel is silent on the matter. The gospels mention Peter and his role among the disciples of Jesus Christ, but they do not go into detail about his personal life, including whether he was married or had children. Yet, we are certain that Peter was married, because, as Mark reported, Jesus at one point healed his mother-in-law. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. Mark 1 verses 29 to 31. So we know Peter was married. What about children? For that, we have to go to sources outside the Bible. The second century writer, Clement of Alexandria, wrote in the Stromata that, Peter and the Apostle Philip fathered children, and Philip gave his daughters in marriage. Also, Ignatius, the disciple of the Apostle John, corroborating this said, For I pray that being found worthy of God, I may be found at their feet in the kingdom, as at the feet of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, as of Joseph and Isaiah and the rest of the prophets, as of Peter and Paul and the rest of the apostles that were married men, for they entered into these marriages not for the sake of appetite, but out of regard for the propagation of mankind. The Philadelphians 4, 1, 81. So these passages written by credible early Christian leaders tell us that Simon Peter indeed had children. In the Roman martyrology, first compiled in the 4th century and updated over the centuries, the Catholic Church confirms that Peter had a daughter and that her name was Petronilla. The passage reads, Saint Petronilla, virgin and martyr, daughter of the blessed apostle Peter, who refused to marry the nobleman Flaccus. Given three days for consideration, she spent them in fasting and prayer. On the third day, having received Christ sacramentally, she gave up her spirit. This Catholic account is a traditional narrative about Saint Petronilla, identified as the daughter of the Apostle Peter. She is described as a virgin and martyr who refused to marry a nobleman named Flaccus. According to this narrative, she was given three days to consider the marriage proposal, during which she spent her time in fasting and prayer. On the third day, after receiving the sacrament of the Eucharist, she passed away. It is not clear who was forcing Petronilla to marry, but she refused even until death. Thus, Today, she is honored as Christian martyr and a saint. While I do not doubt the basis for this narrative, I think we should not forget that the historical accuracy of narratives not found in the Bible can be difficult to establish. Another less-than-credible narrative of Simon Peter and his daughter Petronilla was provided by Jean-Yves Leloup in the book The Gospel of Mary Magdalene. Here is what he said. There are plenty of other early Christian texts dealing with the subject, and several of them make specific mention of Peter's distrust of women, especially even including his own daughter. Continuing, Leloup reports this claim by an early Christian writer. The leader of the apostles, Peter, would flee at the sight of a woman's face. But his daughter was so pretty to look at that a scandal was provoked by her beauty of form, and he started to pray and she became paralyzed. Leloup concluded by saying, Thanks to Peter, Petronilla was able to die a virgin, a saint, and a martyr. Clearly, this account seems to have an agenda that portrays Apostle Peter in an unfavorable light. Why I cannot be sure of his claim, it seems highly unlikely that it would be true, given how loving and caring Apostle Peter is portrayed in the Gospels. It does not make sense for him to have a personality that would seek the demise of anyone, let alone his own daughter. That simply is not true. What is true is that Peter was indeed married and had a daughter by the name of Petronella. For reasons still unclear, she died at a very early age, unmarried. She was canonized as a saint in the Catholic Church. Some Christians who desire to project Peter in certain light have speculated that Petronilla was Peter's spiritual daughter, not his biological daughter. Again, 
There is no historical reason to believe this. Peter being married and having children does not diminish his importance in the sight of God and the church. Thank you for watching. You might also like our video on the complete story of Apostle Peter. It describes the journey of Peter from birth till death, including his personal encounter with Jesus. The link is in the description. Don't forget to like and share this and other videos from this channel. Help us by subscribing to this channel if you have not done so already. God bless you. Amen. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she loves her husband or reverences her husband. Some of you may be thinking that this passage from Ephesians is unrealistic in a day when half of our marriages are ending in divorce, at least in the United States, almost half, not quite so in Canada, but almost. The average duration of marriages in the United States, when you see a couple going to get married, you can figure that their marriage will last, the average will last about nine and a half years. That's all. And now we have whole new lifestyles and many lifestyles in which they say that marriage is only a piece of paper. We're not going to get married. We're going to live together without the benefit of wedlock or the blessing of God. And the divorce rate in America may have leveled off in recent months, but it's still the highest, one of the highest in all the world. The experts are telling us that if present trends continue, that 70% of the children born today will spend most of their lives, young lives, as teenagers in one-parent homes, according to the Chicago Tribune the other day. Divorce among Christians used to be rare, but today we're hearing more and more about an attack against the Christian homes. Homes are in trouble that we thought would never be in trouble because there's an attack of Satan, I believe, in a very special way today against the Christian home because the Christian home is the basic unit of our society and if it fails and falls, our society is indeed in trouble. Ephesians 5 describes a relationship of trust and love and intimacy. It's been terribly misunderstood and abused. The concept of the husband's headship has been viewed by many people as authority in decision making. But it goes far beyond that. When the Bible says that the husband is the head of the wife, just as Christ is the head of the church, that implies leadership, love, protection, giving, caring.